Wow, so you're being censored almost as a person uh, in, in what you do. And we both have had some recent extreme experience with censorship. And until it happens to you, you know, it's always the other guy. It's always the crazy guy. It's always the conspiracy guy. And then when it happens right in front of your face, you're like, what's going on? And, uh, you know, we both have had uh, videos with millions and millions of views that have now been basically taken down. And we've also felt other censorship. So uh, it's real. I guess that's a sign that we're talking about something that must be true. And, uh, and yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, to get into it and find out what it is from your perspective. Because, you know, when I listen to you and you start going down various threads, I mean, you know a lot about this. You know a lot about each individual thread and what's happening. Where do you start with this whole thing? Where do you start to talk to people about what's going on here and what you're seeing that other people aren't? Well, I think that probably in this particular case, a lot of people see it and feel it. They say something's not right. It doesn't make any sense, you know, six feet apart and you have to maintain social distancing and you can't get together in groups of more than 50 and then they drop it down to 20. Yet when you're on a plane, planes are flying all over the world. That doesn't make any sense. What about when you go to the grocery food store? It, it's the most idiotic thought process that's been put forward if this was truly a pandemic. Because if it truly was a pandemic, people would have really died. But they wouldn't be altering death certificates. They wouldn't be furloughing nurses and telling doctors to go home. They wouldn't be taking footage from one hospital and trying to put it on multiple different hospitals. In fact, the Italian hospital that they had the footage on that they put on for New York, when I, I've spent a lot of time in ICUs. And I can tell you, I've never seen an ICU like that. But I thought, okay, well, it's in Italy. Maybe that's how their ICUs look. And then when they showed it in New York, I said, wait a second, that's the same ICU. So if you saw part five, we showed the two different videos side by side. And of course, that went viral. Um, there were many people that talked about, and, and there, in fact, there were seven videos and or websites that had information that I included in part five. And I, the day before, God works in mysterious ways, really mysterious ways. He's got a, also an incredible sense of humor. But the two hours before, the night before the first website went down, two hours before we were supposed to release part five, seven of the nine websites or videos on YouTube disappeared. One of the gentlemen that put out the video that we were going to use, the one in, in the Bronx, and showing he was walking around hospitals in the Bronx trying to find somebody that had COVID-19. I had a conversation with him and he said afterwards, after he got censored, after he got his uh, YouTube video taken down, and he said, he goes, Dr. Buttar, I'm telling you right now that if my life depended on me finding a COVID-19 patient in New York, I would be dead because I couldn't find anybody. And he was standing okay. outside the hospital. So let me start you, stop you right there. So does the coronavirus exist? Is COVID-19 actually being tested for? Is anyone dying for it? Maybe back up a little bit and talk about the way you see this whole piece for anyone that's maybe not familiar with what you've been talking about. Well, I appreciate that opportunity. And I think that that's a really good question, Brian, because there are people that have taken what I've said and misconstrued it and put it together into half-truths that are absolutely illogical and idiotic. Thank you.